You're listening to Online Pet Health Podcasts with Dr. Megan Kelly, continuing education for veterinarian rehabilitation therapists. Learn more at OnlinePetHealth.com. Hey, Vet Rehabbers, what a week it's been. Yesterday, we started with a four-part lecture series from Ariel Pachette Marketing on our small animal membership. Guys, she's the queen of research. This topic is one that she is also really passionate about. She started off with an introduction to canine agility and biomechanics basics. Now, understanding the sport of agility and the physical demands on canine athletes really allows us to evaluate and rehabilitate these athletes much more effectively. So in true Ariel style, you can be sure to get an extremely thorough introduction with a focus on research. And we have three others to look forward to in the upcoming weeks. We add this lecture to our continual growing library of vet rehab learning. We like to focus on creating a platform that is accessible to you 24 hours a day, allowing you to learn and grow your knowledge base when it's convenient for you. So as of today, we have a total of 354 hours of vet rehab training, 169 of these are for small animals, 81 for hydro specific and 104 for equine specific. Now, if you're not a member, you can always test out our limited access membership. Here we give you a taste of what to expect in our full membership. We have three webinar recordings available in the free platform. We have on the small animal side of things, putting neuroplasticity into practice with Amy Hesbach, equine platform, rehabilitation of horses affected by tenosynovitis with Melanie Pereira, and on the hydrotherapy platform, the role of chronic injury on phasic and tonic muscles with Kirsty Oliver. You can go to www.onlinepetout.com forward slash free and sign up. Today we look at a training from our business area. Lisa Mason from Florida Veterinary Rehabilitation shared with us a training on the importance of selling products. She tells us which products to stock, how these increase profits, how to manage your inventory, and how you can create a rental program for extra income. You guys are going to enjoy this one. Over to Lisa. Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa Mason, a veterinarian, rehabilitation therapist, and certified veterinary acupuncturist and pain practitioner. I am the owner and managing veterinarian at Florida Veterinary Rehabilitation in DeLand, Florida in the United States. And today we're gonna to discuss inventory for the rehabilitation practice. Of course, my disclaimer, I'm not a CPA or an MBA or an accountant, but I am a very successful rehabilitation veterinarian and practice owner. And I'd like to use my knowledge to be able to share with you ways that you can also have a successful rehabilitation practice. So when we think about inventory, is it a benefit or is it a burden? Do we really want to carry around all that extra stuff? Do we want to just focus on our services and, and treating our patients and not have to worry about the overhead and things that can come up with the burden of inventory? But what we can see as an inventory can actually be a benefit both financially as well as assisting with compliance and convenience for your clients. So when we think about it, do we have the space to carry inventory? And if not, is there something that we can do to provide that type of space? Whether it be increasing in shelving units, incorporating it within your exam rooms or your treatment rooms, but do you have the space? How much overhead is it gonna cost? Do I want to carry these products that are thousands of dollars versus just carrying a couple of products that I know that I'm going to sell? And how am I gonna manage it? It can be a lot to uh, follow inventory and am I gonna to have to hire somebody? This, these are things that can really hit us hard and make us consider not carrying inventory for these purposes. So let's talk about some of the benefits of inventory. So first of all, it can be very profitable. What I've actually seen is that a very large portion of my profits in my practice come from reselling inventory. And, and this can be a great way for us to also promote the things that we want. So when the clients, when we ask the, the clients ask us, what supplement should we feed? And, and we're like, here's the supplement that I would feed. And then when you think, well, you might need to have a refill and you ask them, the clients will be like, oh yes, I've been feeding that. Let me get a refill on that. So this is going to help us to not necessarily just tell a client that they need to get a product, but actually be able to monitor their usage of that product. 
It's also very convenient for the owners. I love this little dog that goes into a convenience store, helps himself and then leaves. So this is very convenient for our clients. If they have to go and do the research to find the product that you want, nine times out of 10, they're going to come back to you and say, I never found the product. I never bought the product. So if they can actually walk out of the store with this product, then it's going to be a much better situation for both of you. And you're going to end up being very happy in the long run with the results. So what types of inventory can I carry? So the things we're going to talk about are going to be a variety of different supplements, medications, particularly for those of us who are veterinarians, toys and brain games. We often have those cases where they are restricted to rest or crate rest or post-op kids that need to be very quiet, but yet they feel fine and they want to move around. So different types of toys that we can help them with various treats that are low calorie, particularly if we're working on cases of obesity that we need to keep down. Also, you know, trying to do these home exercises with low calorie gross treats is very hard. So pick out some treats that are going to be high value, but also low calorie at the same time. Various types of prescription diets, if you have the space to carry that, or we'll talk about other ways to do that. Uh, perhaps fitness equipment. Again, this might require more space, but is there a way that you can um, carry a few items that are important? And then also assistive devices. So for supplements, this is really important because a lot of pet owners want to do the right thing. They see these advertisements on you know, their Facebook or their Instagram of these different supplements popping up for their dogs, and they don't know what the right thing is to give. And what's important is there's so much really great research out there on products that do work that gets, I think, lost in the translation of which products are great. There's a new treat that's out called Woofies. And I've had so many clients ask me about them. And when I went to read the ingredients, I was like, wow, this is, doesn't have anything in it that's great. But yet they quote research from the 90s on their website. So trying to give our clients an option that's not from the mainstream media that's trying to push these products that don't work. So looking at your joint products, there's something that you really like, whether it be Mobile Flex, Dasequin Advanced, or whatever product is in your area that has the things that you know work. And there's some really great supplement talks that you can look at on online pet help. Um, I won't go into detail with you there, but you wanna make sure it has the products that in, in that product, that the compounds in that product so that you are able to push the product as far as saying, yes, I know this is going to work. And in some cases you actually can see a really a phenomenal difference just even within the first months of use. And then your, your clients are going to be more consistent with that. Also your omega-3 fatty acids, pick something out that works. These are uh, situations where we'll use this as an example later on, but I know about what I'm going to sell and what I'm going to carry. So we're able to, I know I love the Nordic Naturals product myself. Some other people may like the Wellactin product. And whichever it is, you're going to trust it, love it, and help your owners to, to use that. Also really have liked Myos formula, canine muscle formula. I've been using that, you know, in my post-op TPLO. So I have certain cases that I am specifically, specifically going to use this product for. And Myos is a really good example for me of a product that I put off for a long time carrying. And I, I told a lot of my client owners to just find the product online and purchase it. And then when I finally had enough of them say, you know, oh, do you carry that? I was like, all right, I'm just going to carry it. And once I started carrying it, it just, I couldn't keep it on the shelf. And so this is a, a great example of sometimes you have to convince yourself that you're going to sell it enough and that's okay. But once you've convinced yourself that you've told enough clients about it, then go ahead and start carrying that product. Also homeopathy, if any of you practice in Chinese herbals or homeopathy, keeping those on hand can, can also be very beneficial, whether it be CBD. Owners are always looking for a reputable product. And if it comes from you, make sure you do the research and you know you've got a great product, but this is another great way that owners are gonna constantly come back to you for that product. So some medications that are really important in our uh, rehabilitation clinics, of course, are going to be our non steroidal anti-inflammatories. And I like to carry a variety of different products so that, 
you know, I have certain cases, like I like to use Medicam in smaller dogs. I'll use Remedil in my bigger dogs. And then, you know, I don't carry Prevacox, but other clinics might carry Prevacox or whatever is equivalent within your country or community. So these non steroidal anti-inflammatories are going to, you're going to carry them so that you can continuously uh, sell them to your clients and they're going to get refills. Make sure you're doing the, the blood monitoring for these guys as well, or asking the re referring vet to do that. Also galloprant. My thing with galloprant is that it can be very pricey. So it's a lot of overhead. And one thing I've done with this is actually I've done special orders. So the dogs that really need to be on galloprant, what I will do is I will special order this product for them once they've used it for a little while and I'll get them the 90 day count. And I typically will actually match the price on Chewy and in uh, Chewy.com for those of you who are familiar with that service. And in that way, I'm providing a service for them. It's coming from me, but I'm also, I'm, I'm making sure that this is cost effective. I don't expect a lot of a profit margin on this product, but I also don't like to carry it just for that fact that it is a very high overhead. And so this is a product, like I said, of just or a special order for my patients. Also for your non-opioid pain medications like amantadine and gabapentin, we have recently actually had some problems finding or getting gabapentin due to shortages within the market. But these are drugs that I use frequently and for a lot of cases. So I do order these in bulk quantities to keep on hand. Adequan is another great one, and you can actually work directly with the company to, and they will help you to set up even a clinic system. So the way that I provide Adequan for my clients is they buy the bottles from me and I provide the injection service at no charge. So the bottle of Adequan is marked up for me, but I use that profit to kind of cover the overhead in giving the injections and the owners quite appreciate this. And that way we can actually be more compliant with the twice weekly dosing of the Adequan and we mark it down in their charts that they need to have it. So this is a great way for us to ensure that this product is continuously being given. And so we do carry and sell a lot of Adequan. And then also trazodone. So don't forget doing your, your sedative medications as well, because clients are going to need, they're going to come to you and they're going to say, doc, surgeon asked me to keep my dog quiet for all these weeks. And there's just no way I'm struggling with this. So having sedatives on hand that you're familiar with, and you know how to dose appropriately, I think is another great way for you to expand your pharmaceutical cabinet to help your clients. And then going into toys. So a couple of my favorite toys are these things called topples by West Paw. And you can see they kind of fit together, but you can use them in a variety of ways. So I not only carry these for clients that are looking for brain games, but I will actually, you can use them to guide the patients through exercises by putting frozen peanut butter in there, frozen pumpkin and yogurt and the plastic doesn't, it's not too cold. So you can actually use that as a lure for your patients. I also use that during, you know, pat patients that are a little bit nervous about acupuncture sitting still. So we'll use that as a lure for them to sit still and quiet for laser acupuncture. So I have a few of these on hand at home. Of course, of course, your traditional Kongs, I do find that the topples themselves are not super biter friendly, if you will. So my dog personally likes to chew through these. So I preference the, the hard strength Kongs. And so carrying those, just a few items of these, you can carry them on, on your shelf and I'll offer these to the clients when they need solutions for their pets, distractions, or for help with home exercises. And some other things I also like to recommend, of course, are the brain puzzles. And I see a lot of geriatric patients that may be suffering from some cognitive dysfunction and brain puzzles are fantastic for them. It's just like they tell us to do some crossword puzzles to prevent or slow the progression of dementia and Alzheimer's. So I use the brain games for the dogs so that they are able to use their brain and, and stay active and move around. So these are some great options to carry for owners. And again, you don't have to carry, you know, 20 of these, you can carry one or two of these on the shelf. So for food, I am very big in weight loss programs and 
have really great success with them. In some cases, we really do have to reach for a prescription diet. So it's nice to have some options. Now, I do not have the space to carry large amounts of dog food as some clinics may be able to, but you might be able to. What I do is I special order them, whether it be through my distribution company, or I will actually just approve them on Chewy uh, because it's not a, a huge deal for me. But if this is something that you want to you know, use to kind of boost your revenue and you have the space for it, then I think carrying a couple of weight reduction diets is important, both dry and canned food, feline and canine, if you see both patients. So you can see this can get kind of a lot of food if you are carrying all of the options out there. Also, don't forget your joint mobility diets that are so important for some of our patients that have really severe osteoarthritis and potentially putting them on a joint mobility diet where you don't have to add as many supplements to their food can be a really nice option for parents. Also, the Purina diets has the NeuroCare diet, which does help with some of the cognitive dysfunction. It's really, really high in omega-3 fatty acids, but it's also uh, kidney friendly as well. So that can be a nice product also to carry. And then don't forget about our really awesome treats. So I personally use a lot of treats in my exams as well as in our therapy sessions. And so I wanted a really low calorie treat to be able to use but I also needed it to be high value. So I chose the Wagmore treats and I use both the, the dry crunch as well as the soft crunch, the soft shoes. There's also other options like Zooks. There's so many different varieties out there, beef jerky uh, that you can use. And I try and personally stay away from chicken based products just because that seems to be a very high allergy, but I'm always asking my pet parents what types of allergies their pets have. And what happens is if I use these in the exam room and the, the client is like, wow, they don't like treats, but they love my treats, then owners go home with three or four boxes and then they can use, and I know that they're using a treat that's two or three calories a piece. I'll actually even show the owners how to cut the treats up into like three different pieces in their hands. And then I am getting compliance with using these cookies, but also making sure that we're doing low calorie treats that is going to go along with my diet plan for all of my cases. So let's go into fitness equipment. So a couple of different types of fitness equipment out there now. So this is by the, the Blue Nine products and they have a Propel, which is the rectangular disc, if you will. And then they also have the Canine Climb, which I recommend that pretty much all of my agility patients and young dogs use. So we do have a distributor on staff, which makes it easier for me, but we're able to carry these products and sell them to the owner so that they can get them straight away and start working on them. That has worked for me to have the distributor being on staff. And then I just purchase them from her directly. And, but sometimes you can do the fit pause distribution, which the shipping on these products can be quite pricey. So just make sure that you are offsetting the, the cost of the shipping uh, in your price resell to your, your clients. These products are also unchewy. So I have a tendency to err on the side of guiding them in that direction rather than carrying them in clinic because the Chewy price is going to be lower than my price plus shipping and Chewy is got free shipping. So those are some options for, you know, fitness equipment, wanting patients or wanting people to have them at home, I think is important, but finding alternatives where you don't have to carry and have the overhead, I think is important because if you get stuck in always covering the shipping charge for your clients and not putting that into your resell value, you're going to find yourself losing money with these. And also there are the, the Toto Fit products as well. And she mostly does them straight through the website. So that's just another great way. Either you can get involved with TotoFit um, to set up a distribution, or you can direct folks directly to these products. What I've actually also done is purchased a few of the human products for, say, vestibular discs and wedges that I know I'm going to need right away for my neuro cases to send home with my pet owners. And I'll keep those on hand. And then the rest of these things can be kind of 
wait and, and use later on. So for assistive devices, we're going to talk about a couple of different things. But the first thing I'm going to start is the ice pack. You can put your, your logo on these ice packs and you can use it as a promotional item. I typically, you know, with my initial injuries, we'll say we need to ice pack or we need to warm pack. And I always send them home with a free ice pack. You can always charge for that if you want to, but these don't cost a lot of money. It's free advertisement for you. But some people come in and they're like, I want a couple of them. So then I let them buy them at that point. Also booties. These are rough wear booties that I particularly like. I personally do not carry these, but I've known several places that have carried these. And I think I would do fairly well if I did carry them. The caveat with booties is that you have lots of sizes, colors, and it's hard to provide that amount of retail space. If you have the availability to do that, I think you can be very successful in reselling booties. Personally, I send them straight to the website because they think it's a fairly easy website to use. Other things that I do carry a lot of. So the help them up harness is my that was the very first thing I ever started carrying. It's absolutely necessary. And I carry a medium and a large. That pretty much carry that covers most all of my patients. If I need a small or if I need an extra large or if I need any of the handles, I can special order those and get them within a week or a week and a half. But I think it's important that you have a medium and a large harness in the conventional style of the help them up harness to be able to immediately put some of these cases in because people are just, you know, they're carrying these dogs in to see you on initial visits and they need help. And just putting them in a help them up harness can make a world of a difference. And people have called me directly and just said, Hey, can I just pick up a help them up harness from you? You know, even people that were not my clients. And of course, I'm happy to do that for them. The other thing I carry is the balance harness, which is shown here again by Blue Nine Company. This harness is great for my shoulder cases. So I know that if I have a dog with some issues with range of motion in the shoulder, I know that using the, the Blue Nine or the balance harness is going to not affect that shoulder range of motion. So I do like to carry that for that purpose. It's easy to use. And we do have a variety of different sizes and colors. And it's kind of nice, like I said, having the distributor on staff. Also carrying carts. I personally like to carry the walk in wheels carts because I can use them for a couple of different things. We'll talk about rentals here in just a second, but I can change them. I can alter them between one dog to the next. If someone brings me a cart back in after the dog has passed away, I can, we can reuse it for another dog. So for me, this has been very helpful for a dog that needs to be in a cart for a long time. I can get them a permanent cart designed as well, but I find that the walk in wheels has actually been really helpful. We'll go over rentals here in just a sec. The other one is the Biko bands, B-I-K-O bands. And I find these to be very helpful, particularly for my degenerative myelopathy patients or any of my hind end weakness patients that I want them to start building some resistance. Now, again, you can also use these for your sports and competition dogs to use for resistance band training. As long as they have a halter a harness of some type, then these will go as long as they've got that little D-ring on the back. It also works beautifully with the help them up harness. So I do carry these both as rental and for sale. And then of course the, the dog legs, um, you can start collecting several sizes of these so that you can immediately send them home with your medial shoulder instability cases. If you don't do that, you can also measure purchase from company and mark those up just slightly. The CC loop as well as the CC loop beds, we do carry and sell. I do not rent these out. And then once people really like the technology, then we'll buy the beds for them. And again, if you work as a distributor through a CC company, and then you can make a little profit margin on some of these. So for a rental program, I really like to do the and wheels rental program. And I stick with either the mediums and the large or the medium large cart some people do a rental program with the small carts, but I tend to find that I get the small dogs up and moving and walking. 
And I use the medium and large mostly for my degenerative myelopathy cases and for my geriatrics that need a little assistance. So the medium large carts work for me. And I start with a few weeks rental program. They sign a form. And then if they decide that this works for them, then they can, you know, basically purchase the cart outright from me. And so you can make a little bit of profit from just doing a rental program with these cases, but also, and selling them. So, you know, work with the company when the company puts out a, a big deal with, you know, with a various vet conferences and you can order a group of three carts. It actually ends up working out quite profitably. And then the Bico bands, you, they do have a clinic use that you can do rentals and then sell them to the owners. I do like the cold compression unit for rental because I do find that I'm not using as much in clinic because I don't see immediately post-ops, but this cold compression unit by companion is actually fairly easy to use. So I find that most owners would probably be able to use it with their pets. So I rent it out for post-op cases that may have some swelling or the dog is not healing as well as possible after TPLOs. So I really like it for that purpose. And then again, with the dog legs, if they're only going to need it for eight weeks and you want to have it there, you can also do a rental program with that potentially. So how are we supposed to manage this inventory? It can be really daunting. How do we keep track of the ordering? Do I order every day? Do I every week, every month? How do I know these things? And how do I sell them? Like, do I just put them out in the front of my clinic and expect the world to walk in and buy the, the items? How much do I sell them for? Do I mark up a certain number or how do I decide this? So let's go over that. So an inventory manager is really important. This can be someone that's already within your group of employees. It can be your office manager, or it can be a receptionist, it can be a float. So someone who likes to count things, honestly, and is a, a detail oriented, but you're going to want to determine your minimum quantities to maintain stock. And this is something I can't teach you how to do. You're going to have to figure out how often you're selling things. And, you know, what you really want to do is make sure that you always have the product to sell, but you don't, you're not sitting there staring at 10 of them on the shelf for weeks at a time. You know, you have to determine that on your own and you want to reorder when your minimum quantities are reached. For instance, my Chinese herbals, I always want to have three of body sore on the shelf. When we get down to one, it's time to reorder. So we always make sure that I have three on the shelf. You want to also order at a quantity for a discounted price. And we'll go over that here in just a second. And then track in your medical record software, or other tracker. So for example, if you buy treats, you have to buy a minimum of a hundred to get the discount. You sell 20 treats per week. So what you ideally should do is purchase about a hundred every four weeks. So you're getting the max discount you can get. You're selling it at the price that they recommend. We call that the suggested retail price. And so you're actually making extra because you're buying them at a discounted rate by buying in bulk. And so that's helpful for treats. For the fish oil, I can get a discount at say 12 items, no matter what size. So I'm not going to buy 12 large, 12 medium, 12 small. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my sales per month. I'm doing four bottles of large, two bottles of mediums, one small sales per month. So maybe I need to order eight large, four medium, two small. I'm hitting my 12 discounted percentage. And then I'm making a purchase every six weeks, still getting that extra discount but also not having extra inventory on the shelf. So we're gonna also wanna make sure we're monitoring the sales of products. And the way that we do that is we want to, you know, kind of peruse through our inventory management and we go, oh, well, this one's not selling as well as I'd like to, or maybe I'm forgetting that we have this product and I'm not talking about it. So highlighting these products in newsletters, incorporating those items into your exams. So you have an osteoarthritis case and you go over the Dasequin, the omega-3s, the importance of the joint joint formulas. Um, And you're able to incorporate those items into your actual exams and take the items that are easily available at lower cost off of your shelf and rotate items that may not be selling. So making sure that you're aware what is sold easily on Amazon and not selling that product. 
So here's one of my April newsletters, for example. You can see if you can read, but I will read that I talk about recognizing pain in your pet. So this is the very bottom. Dogs and cats do not typically show pain until the pain is usually six out of 10. For people, this level would be pain that is not able to be ignored and that interferes with activities of daily living. How can we recognize and help them before pain gets to six out of 10 levels? They may show reluctance to jump on the bed or hesitate before doing so. They may start picking fights with the other dogs in the house. They may eat slower. They may resist things they used to love, or they may even sleep more. These are very subtle signs that may indicate a lower level of discomfort. What can we do about it? Beginning your dog or cat are nutritional supplements that can reduce inflammation is a great start. Some of our favorite products include Boswellia, green-lipped muscle, eggshell membrane, or omega-3 fatty acids. Homeopathic medications that contain arnica can also reduce low levels of inflammation. Also ensuring your pet is in an appropriate weight can alleviate excess inflammation. And they mentioned this product, Dasaquin Advance. So I give them a background on why we need to pay attention, what we're looking for, and then what we can do about it that's easy for them to do without having to consult a veterinarian directly. So one way to sell some things are going to be to highlighting on weight, fast weight loss, we're going to sell a product that's going to help with fast weight loss. Do we need a distraction? Then we're going to use a towel. Do you need help with getting your pet in and out of vehicles? We're going to use the help them up harness. Do you need help with home exercises? We're going to use the treats and then we'll also use like the propel bench. Do you want a reliable joint product? Omega-3 fatty acids, Dasaquin Advanced. So we're also going to be looking at what price and the retailers, rec retailers have a recommended resale cost that you can basically just set it at that amount. You're going to already make a little bit of overhead on that. You don't have to put too much thought into that. You're going to price match items that may not sell easily. So let's say you started carrying a product that is just not selling and people are telling you, well, I bought my first product from you, but I'm finding it on Amazon for $10 cheaper then maybe you need to price match the Amazon, get it off your shelf and not sell that again. Also purchasing from a distributor in bulk is going to give you an automatic discount. So finding out who is the distributor in your area for certain products is very important. I can't tell you who that's gonna be, just seek out whomever that might be so that you can set up a distrib distribution account with them and start making your max profit off of these inventory items. So again, remove the items which are easily available at lower cost. So some items may sell for distribution costs on Amazon. That's okay. It's really unfortunate that sometimes we are just bought out by Amazon. So don't fight it. Just don't sell these products unless they're in super high demand and people want you to carry them. Rotate items out that might not be selling. So a new product may have come on the market. You may not like that product anymore and you might like this different product. That's okay. Discontinue, sell, discontinue selling them and then sell it the, those products that you have left at a lower cost just to get rid of the inventory. At the point, at this point, they're just causing more overhead. So inventory, it's going to be a benefit for you. It's going to help you to increase your profits, improve your client compliance, and it's convenient to your clients. Thank you for listening to Inventory, Benefit or Burden. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at flvetrehab at gmail.com. Thank you so much for joining. Have a great day. If you enjoyed this podcast, please hit the subscribe button so you get notified every time I load a new podcast. And please, if you get a moment, head over to Stitcher or iTunes and leave me a review. It's a really lonely job being a podcaster. And so the only time I get to hear from you or know that you're out there is when I get a review. And know that I read every single one of your reviews. So to those of you that have left reviews, I want to say a very, very big thank you. Every time we get a review, it really helps to get the Vet Knee Rehabilitation Podcast out there to all the vet rehabbers all over the world. All right, vet rehabbers, so if you are looking for more continued education in the field of veterinary rehabilitation, head over to onlinepetout.com. Go be awesome, guys.